Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include EU budget negotiating done with £16 billion of persuasion European Union begins free trade talks with Morocco and tonight's special report an in-depth look at the Royal Bank of Scotland. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the unit nightly news. First up, from our homepage. As you know, I like to have a bit of comedy on Friday's episodes of the Nightly News. However, I think the stories will probably speak for themselves, leaving you wide-mouthed with the words, you've got to be joking, on your lips. This first article reports that whilst Mr Cameron was strutting like a peacock and lapping the limelight for negotiating a reduction in EU contributions for UK taxpayers, what was actually going on was a mafia-style bribery racket. This article carries some stunning figures and statements, and here is a real nugget, I quote. However, included in the deal were a series of additional payments to individual countries which helped persuade them to sign up to the overall package. So there you have it. Perhaps our PM should think about changing his name to Don Silvio Cameroni. Well, it appears the EU trade negotiators are bursting at the seams with free trade agreements. Open trading with little condition for all comers, except, of course, those that are already members of the European Union cash-leaching society. South America, Africa, United States of America, and now Morocco. Come on down, the price is right! <laughs> this article is top of the tree in our top ten section. Links are below. One. As a result of mismanagement, a terrible ABN AMRO deal and the collapse of the subprime mortgage lending market, Royal Bank of Scotland ran out of cash and was rescued by the UK government who bought 80% of the company at 50 pence per share. RBS then found itself with a mandatory order from the EU to sell 316 of its branches. A deal was struck with Santander which subsequently fell through. This EU order was brought about under the European Treaty rules. RBS shares in the last decade were valued at over £21. Of course, we have to accept the economic bubble overinflated the price at times. Now, the UK government, as announced by George Osborne and also discussed this week by Mervyn King, are planning to sell off the government's shareholding. One option is to split the bank up, selling off the profitable section and retaining the debt-burdened loss-making element. Another option is to gift the shares to every taxpayer. OK, stop. So there it is. Who are the taxpayers? That's you and me. We fund the government. The government has no money of its own. It's all ours. So they're saying they're going to either sell our shares in RBS or give us our money back. Hmm. OK, let's just talk about RBS share price for a moment. The government are going to tell us that they can now get a better price for the shares as they're trading at around 305 pence. Well, that's not quite true. You see, RBS performed a split. In fact, they have done this twice. Once, when the share price was up at around 21 pounds, they split the share 1 for 10, bringing the price of each share down to 2 pounds 10. The price then lifted further to around £5, then collapsed in light of the economic disaster. UK government bought the shares at 50p, which dropped into the low 20s before lifting slightly. RBS then performed a reverse split, 10 shares for one, lifting the price of each share back to around £3. So at today's prices correctly translated back, their value compared to the government buy price is actually 30p a net loss of 40%. So the government takes our tax money and buys this crippled company, makes a 40% loss on the book, and then looks to sell our asset, stripping out the deadwood and debts, and leaving that with us, the taxpayer, and selling the promising, functioning and profitable part to the private sector. And who are the private sector? Well, guess what? It will be the banksters, investment brokers and financial institutions that destroyed the economy in the first place. But that's another story. Let us ask why, how and what might lead our political leaders and senior economic thinkers to draw such an irresponsible conclusion with our money. 
Well, the European Treaty forbids government from providing state aid. So what's actually happening is our elite kleptocrats in the Commission are telling our politicians in Westminster to sell at a loss or face action from the EU over breaching the treaty. In one sense, Monsieurs Barroso and Rumpoy are taking our cash and flushing it. I bank with the RBS and I have seen their letters which clearly explain that RBS must sell its branches under European Union orders. Check out my letter of December 10th, link below. So you see our politicians are not acting in our best interests and they don't even have the power to do so. They're grotted by the dark hands of the Strasbourg and Brussels parliaments. Finally, this behaviour is not isolated to RBS. 26,000 post offices that you and I owned were sold off or shut down using the same protocols. Today in our video library, watch Mervyn King as he explicitly states that the profitable aspects of RBS would be sold to the private sector and the bad parts lumped onto the UK taxpayers as a long-term debt. Unbelievable. That's all from me at the Unit Nightly News. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the E Unit, And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. And finally, our The Word programme is active again. If you would like one of our public speakers to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area, get in touch with us via the Word section of our website. Rick Timmis for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.